My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. It's freezing in here. <laughs> well, don't do chilly, I keep saying. <laughs> anyway, um, this week has been a very busy week. <laughs> Today, though, I get to bend up tube and start trying to make me frame. That's what this is all about. Um, I'll show you the bike in a minute and explain all that. But I've been a busy boy. So, I've got, uh, hang on. I've been making stuff. Yeah. Um, the four jaw chuck that I've got, it's just a lot easier to do it with two chuck keys. So basically I spent most of the week just making tooling for in the workshop. So, made myself another chuck key, a little bit bigger a one than the little poxy one that they give you, just because you can do it either side at the same time. So that's one of the things I did. I um, also did my steel inserts. I'll get a pick of this stuff and show it to you. Um, but these are just the drill guides, so you know, top and bottom, exactly opposite one another. I can just use that in the mill for a, you know, drill through and I'm not gonna trash my jig. So that's all good. Um, I've also made this. This is a waze clamp. Um, so I have one of the, I, I found one on eBay and I bought it and it was, it was just like 3D printed plastic rubbish. Um, but this kind of clamps on the ways of, of the lathe. And then you put a dial indicator on here so you can judge your depth and everything else. It's just, it's a really handy thing. So I made one out of Alley. So he's on the lathe now, which is all good. And I've also started making some tooling for my fly press. So um, I made a couple of anvils, a uh, big one, a little one, just cause I wasn't sure what size I was gonna need. But these basically go up in there. Um, and then you can start pressing stuff down, which is quite cool. Um, there is going to be a whole load of stuff like this that I'll make. Um, and you can just buy it, but you know, I've got a lathe, I've got a mill, I've got a truckload of metal, I'll just make it. Um, and then I've also started collecting um, other bits of steel and stuff, because I'm going to make a bolster. Um, I might cover this actually, because it's, it's quite a good little thing. They've got one at work and they're quite versatile but essentially this sits on a base which bolts in there and there'll be like one circle cut out of it with a shoulder and then there'll be a smaller one on the inside and you can take them in and out and you can put different tooling in and different anvils and all that sort of stuff and you use it for doing all sorts of things you know like dimple dies or you know dimples or you know poking holes in stuff or bending bits of bar or anything like that so 
I've spent quite a lot of time making tooling. There's some other stuff that I've done as well. I can't remember, oh yeah, it's over there. I can't be bothered to get it. <laughs> but essentially, I'm just making my own stuff. Um, I know what I need, I know what I want. I could go out and buy it. It's not cheap, it's not cheap. Um, so I might as well just make it. I mean, that's kind of like half the reason for having all this gear anyway, isn't it? But anyway, let me show you what's going on with the bike. All right, we're going freehand again. <laughs> So, um, first things first, where I chopped all this stuff out, it's all been dressed up and cleaned up and all that stuff, ready to have a go. I've gone past halfway point down here, because obviously we're gonna have a tube that comes out of this. Um, but I want to leave that side, you know, on the left-hand side, in just for reference, because uh, that way I can compare it to the one that I'm trying to make. <laughs> And if it's all going a bit wrong, I can stop and have another rethink. Um, the bike is obviously all back into the jig. Um, I've also spent quite a bit of time sort of squaring stuff up. So if you look down there, that is cock on level. So there's uh, that bar at the front, there's that bar there, there's that one down there. Um, I've measured them, there is 0.1 degree difference um, worst case scenario between in any of them, but that's what I'm taking as me level. Um, I know the bench isn't level, so we're just going referencing off the frame, what's on the frame already sort of thing. And then if you see that very top, like I haven't got the valve cover on the engine, but that top sort of bit of the engine there, that's a machine surface, so that's nice and flat. The difference between that and the bar above it um, is not, 0.2 degrees difference so it's about as level as I'm ever going to get it um, it's all bolted in down the side there it's obviously not bolted in on this side because <laughs> that side isn't there but all the other mounting bolts and everything else that I can get in is in uh, and at the front um, obviously it's like you know I've got a machinist jack down here just help to keep it all up and level and everything else so I reckon we is good to have a go at measuring up and cutting a bit of tube and trying to bend this side so it looks a lot like that side but just nicer and out a bit and a little bit further forward and maybe a slightly different shape as well but basically the same sort of thing anyway before i get into all that lot i do owe an apology out um there was a fella who got in touch on the comments i didn't even know that this was a thing but oh jack's turned up can you hear he listens to some junk. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this fella got in touch. Um, so I can't remember your name. Oh yeah, Revit, because that helps. <laughs> Every time I start filming, somebody rocks up. Anyway, um, yeah, this fella got in touch and he was saying that, the, you know the comic book transitions and stuff that I do? Well, he suffers with something, uh, trip, trip of T R. Why PO phobic is what he is. I think it's trypophobic or tripophobic, something like that. Anyway, apparently, all that sort of stuff properly messes with his mojo and it's like not a pleasant thing. So, I am sorry, I do apologize. I didn't even know it was a thing, you know, not doing it on purpose or anything. So, I'm going to dream up another kind of intro sort of thing and we just see what happens. I don't know what it's going to be. I'll have to work on that. Anyway, let's, um, where's my notepad? Right, probably need a pen as well, eh? Right then. Ooh. See, this is just going to be awkward. <laughs> um, I need to shove the whole of the bike that way a little bit so I can... Do, you'll see why in a bit. Um, right, so first thing is I want to try and figure out where these bends start and stop. It's only a start off for 10. We're gonna to have to kind of do a little bit, match it up, see how we go, tweak and change it as we need to. Um, but I just wanna mark the frame as to where all the, you know, like that bend starts and stops and that one starts and stops and there's a little kink in it here and all that sort of thing. Just so I can start working out how much tube I'm gonna need. So, um, if I straight edge on there, you might not be able to see some of this. Um, I'll get that, but... Right, it's a straight edge on there. 
daylight starts about there. So I'm going to stick a mark on there. Um, I can measure that angle with my digital protractory jobby thing. Um, but the bend stops about there. Uh, and we've got a little kink in it because the tube comes down it has to go between the two exhaust ports because obviously you've got headers come out either side that could be an interesting bit because I'm not really sure how much clearance we've got and there is like this little dimple thing on the inside um, and of course there would be a bracket welded right where I want to be Yeah, and it looks like the kink starts part way through that dimple, which is a pain. Um, <laughs> it's all right, be all right, be all right. In this one, starts about there. And he ends about uh, there, like that. Right then, <laughs> just realised something else as well. That's going to be in the way of measuring that angle, isn't it? Bloody hell. Right, okay, I'm gonna have to guess that bit as well then. So, I've now got start and stop points. So the bits in between is straight. <laughs> That's the theory anyway. Right, um, so, if we was to draw a quick picture of this. Very rough. All right, let's um, pull this over a bit. Don't fall off. <laughs> it's proper dangerous now, did not it? Right, so where's my tape measure? So that first bit from the top of the cope to my mark is 143-ish. I want to give myself a little bit of room as well. Um, but I will put down the proper marks and stuff. You know, say 143. So that's the top bit. That's 143 millimeters. Then we've got a bend. So how big is my bend? Where's my protractory jobby thing? Right, on, off. So we set that on a straight edge and zero it. And this should just tell me what the bend is. Uh, yes. All right, so outside of the bend. Come on. I can't get in there properly because of the welds, but looking at that, um, so I've got it hard up on here, and then this, obviously there's a gap because I can't get up there anymore, but if we get that gap basically level, uh, oh, actually that kind of works-ish. All right, that's about 30 degrees. All right, so that is a 30 degree bend. And we've got another straight bit down to that kink. Uh, 
um, which is from there to there, so that's about 120. Right, those measurements, they're just really rough. They're just to give me a rough idea how much tube I need to chomp off. I am gonna work out the length and then I'm gonna add a bit as well because there are a few changes I wanna make to this. Right, there is bugger all room. There is nothing. Um, and we are using um, slightly wider tube. Um, the stuff I've got is inch and a half, so basically it's the same as this. This stuff down here and at the front, that's all skinnier. Don't like that, I want it all the same. So, um, some of the changes is gonna be where it comes down the front here and then down between the exhaust ports, and then we get this little nudge out. Um, I'm probably gonna have it continue down, because there is a bracing bar that goes across the front there anyway, so that's fine, but we're probably gonna come down to where the, um, the engine mount is, and then we're gonna kick it out here, so move that kink down a little bit. And then we're going to pull it out this way a little bit more. Um, reason being is at the minute this engine doesn't have a sump on it. And that is really close to the inside. Um, and I can't have anything knocking. I want, you know, good clearance everywhere basically. Apart from that, I think it'll make the bike look a little bit nicer. You know, frame the engine plonked in it rather than just everything stuffed in and rubbing up against one another. Um, plus, this engine doesn't have a sump on it at the minute. When I put the engine in, I want to do it with the sump if I possibly can do. So a little bit more room would not be a bad thing. Um, this engine mount, it kind of, it's welded on, but it wraps around the tube and then it comes out this way and then it goes up. Whereas if I move this out a little bit, and it ain't got to be a lot, not a lot at all. I mean, we're probably only talking like 20 mil total total difference in width of the frame at the bottom something like that i would guess it's not massive but it means i could neaten all this up and try and get it a little bit more sort of respectable it would be nice if that was kind of flush with the outside of this tube it would just be cleaner um and that engine mount is going to be staying where he needs to and then when it comes back it obviously means it's going to need to tip in to come up to that um uh swing arm point so basically I'm putting a few more triangles and stuff in it, which will hopefully give it a little bit more strength. Um, and then it'll all be braced across and all that sort of stuff. So that'll all be good. But there are gonna to need to be a few changes. This side's gonna be a bugger because of all this lot. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Right, so this is my rubbishy little drawing. Um, I've got my cheaters and everything. I just need to see which one I'm going to use for that top bend. Um, actually, that one looks spot on just holding it up. Um, right, so where's my pen? Uh, so, first bit from the yoke down to here, we're saying is 143. So, if this is our length of tube, we need to know how much to cut off so we can get it around all these bends and still have enough to get the job done. So, starting point, we need 143 plus a bit. That gets us to this start of that bend there. That bend is 30 degrees and we're going to be using this, um, uh, the, the, the die that did this one. So that's the four and a half inch one. Uh, so that bend there, 4.5 inch, and we are going, what did we say, 30 degrees. So if we look on our marks, um, if you remember, I, um, I've marked all this off in 10 degree increments, um, and then the, the little dashes, um, they're 10 mil increments, but that was done when the tube was straight. So there's zero, 10, 20, 30, which basically brings us to that point there. Okay, so we are gonna need 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and a bit, maybe 63 mil, 
to do a 30 degree bend. So that's going to be 63 mil. That's mil. That brings us up to this point. Okay. Then we need another 120 before we get that little kink. So I'll have another bit, 120 mil. Then we've got a five degree bend, which is that little kink. We know that's going to be different. Um, I'm going to guess and say that might be seven degrees. Okay. So again, if we look down here on our cheetah, 10 degrees, seven degrees is about, I don't know, there. Halfway between the 10 and the 20 mil mark. So we'll err on the side of caution and give that, um, uh, and that we'll be using the same die for that. So at that point, the bend is 4.5 inches. Um, and that is going to be another 15 mil. So we're now just below that kink. We've got another run of 160. So 160 mil. And then we've got a 67 degree bend, but that's going to be using this die. So at that point, we're then on the 5.5 inch die there and we will just say 67 so 10 20 30 40 50 60 7 is about there we use that mark i guess so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 110 120 130 140 150 160 so we we'll need about another 160 mil to get around that bend and then we're on to a straight bit. This is going to be slightly out as well, which really is going to be interesting because that's going to change the, the clocking angle on this. Um, and we will deal with clocking when we come to actually doing that bend. Um, I've said 500 mil plus, we'll probably, I don't know, change that to 600. Just because it, it's going to give me plenty. There's going to be a big old chunk to come off the end of this. Um, the other thing is that in order to go through that tube bender, um, where this bit goes into the clamp, I need 100 mil to actually clamp it in the tube bender to start off with. Well, either end, we're going to have a straight bit. That one is 143. So I've got plenty enough to do it. So I haven't got to add anything on the end here just to clamp it in the bender if that makes sense so if we're adding 600 mil to the end of this all right that is the total length of tube that we are going to need from there to there add all that lot up and that's what it comes out as um where's my phone i'm not doing that in my head 